I'm Rear Admiral Thomas M. Dyke is retired. We call this chapter the silent service, the end of the line. It is a unique story. Unique because it had never happened before in the history of anti-submarine warfare and because the methods employed were anything but orthodox. You will hear the captain of the USS Thresher say, those little buzzards would try anything. In July of 1942, the USS Thresher was assigned a patrol station off the entrance to Kwajalein Atoll in the Central Pacific. Those were the rugged days for the submarines. The war was still new and our boys didn't know what the Japs had in the way of secret anti-submarine weapons and tactics. To add to their uncertainties, they weren't quite sure of what we ourselves had. Our torpedoes showed an annoying tendency not to explode when they hit the target going off before they got there, which was equally disturbing. Both would end up in no damage to the enemy and a licking for the submarine. In those days, there was no radar to warn them of dangers in the darkness. With these uncertainties and deficiencies, it took brave men to sail their ship to within three miles of an enemy base. But they were looking for enemy ships, and that was the way to find them. The Thresher's skipper was Lieutenant Commander William J. Milliken from Valley Stream, New York, a fine athlete at Annapolis and a veteran submariner. Lieutenant Robert M. Brinker from Park Ridge, Illinois, was her executive officer. The diving officer was Lieutenant James S. Bryant of Pasadena, California. A torpedo officer, Lieutenant Lawrence V. Julin of Albuquerque, New Mexico, was off to the deck on the early morning of July 8, 1943, as the Thresher stealthily approached her diving point off the entrance to Kwajalein. I've been hearing... Shh. I've been hearing something, Mr. Jolin. Sounds like an engine run. Where? What direction? I can't make it out. Seems like it's all around us. Can't you hear it? Is that what you mean? Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's our own auxiliary engine. Every now and then, the sound seems to come up the ventilation piping from the engine room. You're right. I must be getting jumpy. Now, don't let it bother you. It had me worried for a long time when I first came on watch. Mr. Brinker says the enemy might even try to board us at night in here. Yeah, they would. They got close enough before we saw them. Maybe we ought to bring the hand grenades and the tommy gun up on the bridge where we can get at them. They'll be okay in the conning tower. Now pipe down so we can listen. Still all clear, Mr. Brinker? I'll bet you get something to listen to before the night's out. Bridge? Yes, Bob? Still all clear on the sound gear. Thanks, Bob. Why don't you get some rest? I am. I'm going below now. The captain is resting here in the conning tower if you need him. Right. I don't see how the captain can take it. He's up all day making attacks and dodging patrol craft. And at night, he sleeps on the deck of the conning tower. Things can happen mighty fast at night. He feels he has to be near the bridge. Owes it to the rest of us. Nobody can stand that for long. Well, don't worry. When he figures he's had it, we'll pull out and spend a couple of days just resting down about 200 feet. I could use that right now. And I'm not carrying his load. Propellers bearing one zero five. Wait, slow runner. Can you see anything, Larry? No, sir. I'm turning to put the bow toward the sound. Good. Here he is, right in the beam. He's heading right at us.
probably caught under the lid. What of the lookout saddle? We can't stay submerged for this leak. Jim! Yes, sir. We're going to have to open the conning tower hatch again. Find her up to the hatch is two feet out of the water. Stand by to take her back down again. Aye, sir. Clean her up. You men better go below. We'll have a take a shell through here. negative. begins, Larry. 200 feet. No damage below. Everybody's okay. Good. Should have seen it, Bob. He had us cold. All he had to do was keep coming. He'd cut us right in half. At the last second, he chickened out and he turned away. Then we ran along side by side looking at each other. Oh, sorry, I missed it. I got the Tommy gun from Mr. Jalin, but he wouldn't take it. Oh, when I saw the guns he had, I figured it was best not to disturb the peace. <laughs> Put us on a course for Quadulin, Bob. We'll keep on running silent. My guess is we haven't shaken this joker yet. Yes, sir. The tenacious thresher continued to head for her hunting ground off the entrance to the atoll. Now, best go. Battle stations. Battle stations, I. Again, Bob. Big merchantman just stood out of the atoll. She's dead ahead. Let me take a look. A periscope. Down periscope. I don't see any escorts. I didn't either, but our friend from last night is still milling around astern. Make ready all torpedo tubes. Set depth to 10 feet. Now let's all settle down and get this guy. Periscope. Mark bearing. 342. Mark range. 1900 yards. Down periscope. Hang on to our 50 port. All torpedo tubes ready. Stand by, Larry. A periscope. Mark bearing, 340. Fire. Fire. Take it on, emergency. 
plane making a bomb run on us. That was a close one. Take her right down to 200 feet, Jim. Everything okay down there? Everything's operating okay. That guy, two hits. Did he sink? I don't know. It's a lucky thing we didn't hang around waiting to see. How do we head? Steering due south. Bring her around to the east. Steer 090. Left full rudder. Steer 090. Left full rudder. Steer 090. I ought to mix him up a little. The star gets sinking. I can hear it breaking up. How about propellers? It's all quiet up there. I can't hear any props at all. You sure that thing is working? Yes, sir, it's working fine. They followed us on that last turn, Bob. There's got to be a ship up there. There must be. I don't see how they can see us from the air at this depth. Just to be safe, we'll take her down to 250 feet and change course again. Take her down to 250 feet! Steer 180. Steering new course, 180. These charges are right on, Bob. It's got to be a ship. Must be something wrong with our listening gear. Rig for silent running. Rig for silent running. Rig for silent running. Shift the bow and stern planes to hand. find out if they've been hearing us. All compartments are rigged for silent running. We must have fouled a fishnet, maybe dragging it behind us, boys and all. There's something sure marking our position. Have all compartments checked for oil or air leaks overboard. That first charge was a dilly. If we ruptured an oil or an airline, we'd be leaving a nice trail. The bow buoyancy tank. It's going overboard and we can't stop it. We'll keep trying. Aye, sir. Serious, Bob. No matter what we do, they can hang on till dark. last night. He's heading right for us. His bearing hasn't changed. It's the same noise again. Well, if it didn't hurt anything before, it shouldn't now. I'm just allergic to the loud noises underwater. Aren't we all? Sounds like he's turning around. He's starting back. Left full rudder. Left full rudder.
What's that, Mr. Brinker? I don't know, but I don't like it. Forward torpedo room says it sounds like a diver on deck. It's no diver. My guess is it's some kind of a hook. A hook? What for? Some new trick. So that's why they haven't depth charged us. I suppose it will try anything. Take her down to 300 feet. Speed, Captain, she won't go down. In fact, she's coming up on me. All ahead, two thirds. Left full rudder. All ahead, two thirds. Left full rudder. Planes on full dive. She's still coming up. Permission to flood negative? Flood it. Flood negative. Flood negative. Officer to burn the code books and all secret matter right away. Yes, sir. Shift your rudder to right full. Shift the rudder to right full. Flood number one auxiliary from sea. Auxiliary, but we're still being pulled out of the water. Ship 
ships are coming in from all around us, sir. Tell Maneuver to give us all the speed they've got. Maneuvering, give us all the speed you got. He's buying the stuff now. Good. We're kicking ahead at full power. This ought to break something. We're still rising. Didn't work. Stand by, Larry. When he pulls us up high enough to see, we'll fill the ocean with torpedoes. Make ready all torpedo tubes. Make ready all torpedo tubes. Watch her, Jim. I'm going to back. All back emergency. All back emergency. We're going down. All ahead full. All ahead full. Now that it's all over, I'm a little weak in the knees. <laughs> Give me a cigarette, Larry. Boise almost got us. Yeah, his luck ran out just the right time. Still a pretty lucky guy. How's that, Captain? Oh, when he sits around telling about the big one that got away, he won't be lying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very pleased to introduce to you Captain Lawrence V. Julin, who is the torpedo and gunnery officer of the USS Thresher on that memorable day off Kwajalein. Larry, it's good to see you. Tommy, thanks to be here. Larry, do you do any fishing? Yes, actually, it's one of my favorite sports. Well, I'll bet you're one of the few fishermen who have any sympathy for the one who got away. Well, Tom, they go with my blessing, and it seems like a lot of them do, too. Perhaps subconsciously you hate to drag them in. How does it feel to be on the end of a fish line? Well, I made 13 submarine war patrols. And the Ramones, of course, when the issue seemed in doubt. But this one had an eerie, unreal quality about it that topped them all. With a patrol averaging around 50 days, you were actually at sea in a submarine for almost two solid years under war conditions. As I remember, it seemed like more than 10. You were one of the real ball carriers of the submarine war, and it's an honor to have you with us. Thank you. <clears throat> I hope you will be with us again when we reenact another true submarine story. <laughs>